So in this section here, we're going to talk about the different types of grip, both from an able body and then from a wheelchair perspective. There are two types of grips that we use. We use a forehand grip and a backhand grip. So we're going to demonstrate what a forehand grip looks like. A forehand grip, we pretty much call it shaking hands with the racket. So my assistant, Tracy, is going to come up, and we're actually going to shake hands. We're going to apply that theory to actually shaking hands with the guard. So when I shake hands with, with Tracy, that V grip that he's using is the same application that I'm going to use when I shake hands with the racket. So I'm going to shake hands with the racket as in take the racket, it's going to be straight up and down, and I'm going to actually just put my hand right on the actual racket as though I'm shaking hands with it. I use a V pattern when I put my racket in the hand to where the racket is staying straight and that V pattern is going to be where I want to position the racket. I don't position the racket to where it's over, overhanging or overlinging. The reason why is because if I were to hammer, hammer a nail into the wall, I don't hammer with the hammer so tight. I actually let that racket slide down to where I actually have a little bit of the pinky off of the racket controlling the racket. That being said, when I actually come through, I'm using that same grip to keep the racket flat. The racket isn't turned up where the ball is going to go up or turned down to where the ball is going to go into the floor. That V grip is going to keep that racket straight perpendicular with the floor. Forehand grip. Tracy, would you mind showing him again the forehand grip? So he shakes hands with me, and then he's going to take that same grip. His is more profound, more profound to where the V is actually right up against the side of the racket. Forehand grip, thank you. The backhand grip is where we're going to come around and swing on the back portion of our body. We use this same tech technique as though we're using, you know, when you drive a motorcycle or when you want to ride a 10 speed, if these are my handlebars, I take my actual grip and grip the handlebars to where I'm actually gripping the racket and I'm using the thumb to push the racket around. I'm using that thumb to control the racket as I come through, so when I come through, I have control force when I make contact with the ball. Again, when I come through, the racket is flat, the racket isn't turned up or turned down, but the racket is actually in control, staying flat portion with the uh, floor and making contact. Trace is going to demonstrate again with the backhand. Can you show the backhand grip? Again, his grip, one, you notice how the racket is a little bit, his thumb or his pinky is hanging a little bit off of the grip, the butt of the racket, but his thumb and his grip here is pretty much angled towards more of the floor here. So again, the backhand grip, we both have a little bit slightly different, but I call it the motorcycle grip where the thumb is actually using the flat portion to hold the grip steady, and then the forehand grip is actually coming around. Now from there, from a wheelchair perspective, I'm gonna bring up our assistant Chip, who's gonna explain a little bit different technique that, they, that you're using when you're in the chair going through both the forehand and the backhand. Thanks, Stephen. Really almost identical when you have time on the forehand. It's still handshake, V, finger off the end of the racket. Uh, one thing that in the chair that able-bodied person doesn't do is I've got to be able to push my chair so the grip becomes part of my hand, really becomes part of the palm of my hand when I'm pushing. So I'm going to move the racket. So with forehand grip, I'm going to move to this position and the racket handle becomes part of my hand, really. The backhand, very similar. If I have time, I turn it over to what Stephen would call the motorcycle grip. I don't put my thumb here. Everybody has a little different way of doing that. I just go ahead and wrap it around because that's where it's easier to get back to my chair handrail. Here, if I have time, oftentimes, if I don't have time, I hit it with a forehand grip just because I don't have time to change it up, change it back to get back to my chair. So probably 50% of the time, I'm hitting backhands with a forehand grip just because I don't have the time to do this, this, and this. So we just talked about the forehand grip, backhand grip, and I call that mono muscle memory. Now the major muscle memory is positioning your body to hit those actual shots. 
The first thing I like to teach all the veterans, all the students is when I first start to play, a couple things to keep in mind. One, my feet are shoulder width apart, but when you start to play, you'll see how that's gonna change a little bit, but we wanted to make sure we have good technique. I'm gonna explain now the forehand and the forehand strike that we wanna use. So when we do a forehand grip and a forehand stroke mechanics, I teach them to a couple things. One, keep your racket up. We call that ERP, early racket prep. ERP, early racket prep. And as I'm hitting a forehand, I actually form a square with my racket, my head, and my forearm. If I'm going this way with the forehand grip, the first thing I wanna do is after I get committed, I step with my non-hitting hand a 45 degree angle. In other words, my racket is still up. I don't step straight out. I don't step and ride a horse. I would step at a 45 degree angle comfortable. So from here, that's step one. Step two is I'm gonna pivot my rear hip. That's where you get the power and the motion to actually swing the racket around. If I'm going this way, I committed my step. First thing I do is if I'm able body and I'm able, I bend my knees. The reason why is because when I take the stroke and I hit the ball, I want to stay as low as possible. The way you do that is you want to bend. Again, my 45 degree angle, I'm bent at both knees. I'm turning off my rear hip. I pivot my ball of my foot, or the rear ball of my foot turns and commits. Then I come around. If you notice, the racket still hasn't moved. I've turned my body, torso, everything is turned. Now I bring the racket around. Bring it around slow, still keeping the forehand grip. I come around, contact with the ball. It's pretty much where the front ball of my foot is, is where I'm gonna make contact with the ball. Contact and the follow through is I actually put the racket in my pocket. So if I'm coming to you with the forehand grip, again, rack it up. 45 and step. Real hip turns, the ball of my foot turns, I commit and I turn my torso. Now I'm facing you. Now the racket comes around, contact comes around and makes the follow through. Again, from a side angle view again, racket is up, ERP. Step, 45, turn, pivot. Come around, make contact with the ball and come through. What that's gonna look like in fast motion is if I'm coming here, the ball, the position of the ball, you wanna keep make contact with the ball out in front of you. If you make contact with the ball in here, we call that choking yourself, choking the ball. So if I'm here, I can't get a good contact of the ball. I wanna make contact where the ball is going to be. What that's gonna look like in fast motion is rack it up, step, turn, pivot, and hit and keep the ball down, I'm sorry, keep the racket down. The most important thing is when you take that swing is to keep the racket down and low and I call that follow through. So again, from a side angle view, I'm gonna commit ERP, step, turn, pivot and go. Here, racket stays down. Again, racket stays down. Now, if you notice my head and my body, my, rack, my head doesn't follow my racket around. I know where the racket is going. I just commit to it. I try to stay low. I try to keep my back or my spine upright as much as possible. If I'm bent over, ball goes down because my racket goes down. If I'm flat, we call it 60-40. 60% of the weight is on my front leg, 40% on my back leg, make contact, and I come through. Last time, from a side view angle, step, turn. Rack it up, step, turn, contact, follow through, look at my racket, still in my pocket. Side view, step, turn. That is a forehand grip that we call it, a forehand stroke. A backhand is a little bit different. If you're throwing a Frisbee, we always like to have analogies. We use a Frisbee toss in class to actually get that motion. If I'm a baseball player, 
and this is the, this, the uh, batter's box. What a baseball player would do is make contact and try to take the ball over the fence. Again, from here, they come in, contact, bring the ball up, which is fine, but in racquetball, what we'll talk about later on in our chapters, there are different zones that we want to hit at. So instead of here, baseball swing, baseball players, they have their front leg straight, and the rear leg is where they get that power. They come up and out. What we want to do is just take a, sort of that same motion, but we want to be 60-40. 60% on our front leg, 40% on our back leg. Again, muscle memory. That racket is still up using the motorcycle grip. When we come around, again, not, this time we're gonna use our hitting leg to make contact and step up. So from here, racket is up. The reason why is because when we're playing, if my racket is down, I gotta come up and then swing. So from here, if you have the racket up, it's easier to make contact. So from here, rack it up, ERP, thumb grip, motorcycle grip. We're going to step with our hitting leg this time, step out at a 45 degree angle, turn with our rear, commit, pivot the hip, come around, and the follow through is the most important thing. What do I mean? So first step, pivot. The racket still hasn't moved. I did. So from here, I pivot rear hip. Now here comes the play make contact as though my front leg, my front foot in contact with the racket is still the same. Contact and I come around in here. I don't come around and drive up like a baseball player. A couple things will happen. When I do that, one, I'm putting torque on my back and spine, and two, when I make contact, either the ball's gonna go down to the ground or it's gonna go up to the ceiling, which we don't want. Again, slow motion, step, turn, contact, and if we had that zoom, you'll see that the racket stays on the same plane as it comes all the way through, and we do follow up. Again, slow motion, racket up, step, pivot, turn, hip, all the way through. From a front point of view, again, from here, step and turn, contact, follow through. What does that look like in fast motion? From here, again, look at where my racket ended up. It didn't end up here. Look at where my back is. I'm not bent over. From here, step, and come through. Again, step. Notice how my hips take that pivot before the racket comes around. So what did we just talk about? The forehand grip from here, come through. Put the racket in your pocket. Turn your hips, pivot on the ball of your foot. Backhand, same hitting foot. Again, the fundamentals, I still pivot on the rear foot. Turn, follow through. Forehand stroke, the backhand stroke. From an able body standpoint. Now, from a wheelchair standpoint, we wanna see how that's applied, and Chip's gonna explain both the forehand and backhand grip. Okay, Chip, good. So. It's, these strokes are definitely different than able-bodied forehand and backhand because I'm sitting and I cannot get any hip action, I can't get any knee bend, I'm already bent, so there you go. So my forehand and backhand, whenever I'm, so if this is the front wall, when I'm making my forehand stroke, I will usually turn about 45 degrees. The reason being is if I'm facing the side wall, I cannot hit a forehand because of my knees. So I have to turn my knees out of the way, so I'm a 45, and my forehand stroke is more, because I'm lower than most able-bodied players to begin with, I have an advantage in the fact that I can strike the ball quite low to the ground, so my stroke when I have time, is definitely gonna come up here. I'm gonna make similar to the square that we talked about, that Stephen talked about, and my forehand is coming down here, perpendicular, and I'm not following through this way because I can't take my knees out, so I have to come up with my stroke and, and bring it over my shoulder. 
So starts up high, comes down here, and finishes above my shoulder. I cannot do this. I have to do it this way. Up, down, and through. And when I do that, typically my chair is going to slide forward because I'm letting the momentum from that swing take me forward. You see how the chair moves. So now I'm facing the front wall again. So if it were here, the front wall is ahead of me. My stroke is down here and through. I'm facing front wall. I'm ready to move. The backhand, we're going to turn that same thing. I cannot face the side wall. Able-bodied guys they, and girls, they get to put their toes toward the side wall and turn. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take that 45. I'm going to get the racket up. It's, it's, when I have time, up here, my stroke is down. And it's not over here. It's up because I want to be able to get back to my wheels. So I don't want to hit my knees. My backhand starts through and recovers to the wheels as quick as possible. So down, stroke through, perpendicular to the floor, through and back to the wheels. Hopefully that's explanatory enough. Stephen, any other thoughts on that? No, on, the, on for the wheelchair, you said a key thing. Let the chair rotate naturally at a 45. Remember, I took a 45 degree uh, step, not straight out, not at a, a straight perpendicular, but a 45, same concept with the chair. Whether it be the forehand or backhand, Chip showed that the chair wants to turn naturally, so follow that through and make the strike point at a 45 degree angle. So we talked about from a wheelchair perspective and from an able body, both the forehand and backhand. Now in the next chapter, we're gonna see all of this applied to the three different types of strokes. We call it down the line, cross court, and a pinch shot. And you'll see how all that is played in, but we wanna get the fundamental basics out the way so you understand why you're hitting certain shots. So stay tuned for next chapter, and we'll see you then guys on the court. Thank you.